everybody. I'm Laura Ingram. This is Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Come and take it. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, good news from the Texas AG, Ken Paxton, today. The Lone Star State does not intend to bend to federal agents trying to enter Shelby Park in Eagle Pass. Now, the agents use the park as kind of a staging ground to process migrants and do other things, uh, migrants who are crossing into the United States. But Texas Governor Greg Abbott released a statement, remember, on Tuesday, accusing Biden of violating his constitutional duties to execute immigration laws. And then today, this. The authors of the Constitution knew there would be times when the federal government would not live up to its duty. And so they empowered states in Article 1, Section 10, the right of self-defense. And what Texas is asserting is our Article 1, Section 10 right of self-defense mm. because the President of the United States is not fulfilling his duty to enforce the laws passed by Congress that deny illegal entry into the United States. Well, Abbott is 100 percent correct. From day one of his presidency, Biden and his puppeteers have done everything possible to signal to the world that it's open season at the U.S. border. Everything. We all know the results. A complete catastrophe and a windfall for transnational gangs and child sex traffickers. I only wish that Texas had done what it's doing now sooner. Now, Biden's lawyers are in federal court, remember, as this is all happening, suing Texas for taking actions to secure its border. It's just shameful. So if you're living in a state where your governor has not issued a statement supporting Texas and its standoff with the federal government at the border, then at this point you should consider moving. Now the list is growing of Republicans who are pledging to stand with Texas, about 24 governors now, and against the Biden administration's attempts to facilitate illegal border crossings into the U.S. Now all of these are states led by governors who care about preserving our country and certainly care about preserving our rule of law. So I'm asking tonight, where's Kathy Hochul of New York? Where's Maura Healey of Massachusetts? Where's Andy Bashir of Kentucky? Remember, he's such a moderate. And where's J.B. Pritzker of Illinois? Well, expect only crickets from them, which means only one thing. They support Biden and his open borders more than they care about their own residents. Is that a heck with a strain on kids' schools, hospitals, law enforcement, state budgets? Ah, don't worry about that. They care more about giving political cover to Biden on an issue than, like, like this than closing the border to the cartels and the traffickers. And speaking of shameful, are the U.S. senators so desperate to shovel $60 billion more to Zelensky that they'll sell the rest of us out with a fake border deal? President Trump has already smartly come out against any bill struck with Biden, which is sending the Nikki Haley wing of the party into a tizzy. Think about this. Biden's Homeland Security Department is, again, literally suing Texas to prevent it from enforcing the border. And yet McConnell, Lankford, and their other yes men like Kevin Kramer of North Dakota, Todd Young of Indiana, they want you to believe that suddenly Biden can be trusted to enforce new provisions. What's interesting to me is there are a lot of angry people out there, and that's why the border crisis is the number one issue for, for voters. I don't see how we have a better story to tell when we miss the one opportunity we have to fix it. Anything that interrupts that negotiation, uh, I think, would be tragic. I don't doubt that he wants a perfect deal. So do I on it. But we've got to be able to figure out how to be able to do something right now to get as much done as we can possibly get done. Now, with Republicans like these, who the heck needs Democrats? They all know that Biden doesn't need legislation to fix the border. Plus, one source with knowledge of the text of the so-called bipartisan border bill tell us that it'll still allow Biden to parole in close to 2 million migrants over his last year in office. And by the way, in addition to that, fast track hundreds of thousands of more foreign workers which is why liberal open borders Democrats like Chris Murphy are also anxious to ram it all through. I hope we don't live in a world today in which one person inside the Republican Party holds so much power that they could stop a bipartisan bill. Actually, the one person who actually had our border under control is precisely the person we should be listening to, along with the American people, of course. 
So Mitch McConnell should now put an end to this nonsense. Do it tonight, because all the exit polls, even in moderate New Hampshire, show that Americans believe that migrants are hurting the country, and they want this flow stopped. They don't want it managed. It will only be stopped, though, of course, when Trump's back in office. So don't pretend otherwise. Oh, and by the way, most Americans aren't in favor of sending more money to Ukraine either. They want to take care of business at home. So do your job, senators. Americans are smarter than Washington thinks. And I, I, I'm always stunned at how little Washington thinks of the common sense of the American people. They see that the Uniparty didn't care much about securing our border until they needed to find a way to funnel more money to secure Ukraine's border. And they see that the Democrats didn't care about it until the issue started really hurting Biden. And the telltale sign that the angle has been right all along about the schumer langford border sneak? Well, Thurston Howell III is for it. Former President Trump has indicated to senators that uh, he does not want us to solve the problem at the border. Uh, he wants to lay the blame for the border at Biden. Uh, and the idea that, that someone running for president would say, please hurt the country so I can blame my opponent and help my politics is a, uh, uh, a shocking uh, uh, development. With such trenchant analysis, he still lost in 2012? That's shocking. Now, the whole notion that Donald Trump or Republicans want chaos at the border to use as an issue against Biden is, of course, both fatuous and untrue. When Trump was president, he ended the chaos at the border, even though it made it easier for Biden to downplay the importance of border enforcement in the 2020 campaign. From beginning to end, Trump and populists have been clear that they want strong and effective border enforcement, no matter who's president. What's actually happening, of course, is that Biden's team was working with Chuck Schumer behind closed doors on a secret deal that would not end the chaos at the border. It would have enshrined it. And it would have given the Biden administration not one, but two political victories. First, the stories in the media about how the Republicans had agreed with Biden on stronger enforcement measures. Ridiculous. And second, that the administration would still be free to do catch and release which is, again, great for the cartels and great for the human traffickers. Literally nothing in the country would improve except Biden's political fortunes. It would be suicidal for the GOP to help Biden sweep the border chaos under the rug so that we can have even more chaos once Biden is reelected. This issue should be presented clearly to the voters in November. It's a clear choice. It shouldn't be muddled with a lot of talk about a deal that would leave Biden's most destructive policies intact. If the Biden administration really wants to take the border issue off the table in November, they have the legal authority to do it right now, tonight. But they will not. Instead, they'll, they'll do things like sue Texas, which is actually daring the feds to remove its border area razor wire. Now, last night, I told Senator Ted Cruz that someone should make come and take it, you know, the Alamo style, you know, deal, the flag, and put it on T-shirts, bumper stickers, you know, kind of new gear for the occasion. So he tweeted this out today. I love it. To govern is to choose, and the Democrats choose open borders. They'd rather increase Trump's chances of winning in November even than doing what it takes right now, which they could do to seriously enforce our immigration laws. And why are they doing this? Because that's what fanatics do. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.